Hi, welcome back. I'm Eugene Sakai with Studio S Squared Architecture. And today I have with me Spencer Vieira, who is a longtime uh, affiliate of our firm. And today we're gonna go into phase three, construction documents. Uh, so Spencer, um, I don't know if you're old enough, but certainly I am. When, uh, when I was first starting out in the profession, uh, construction documents were called uh, blueprints. Do you remember that term? Uh, I ran enough of them over the years that I'm very familiar with that term. <laughs> <laughs> so I think blueprints may be um, kind of a colloquial expression for, for what we call these days construction documents. They aren't blue anymore. Uh, back in the day, they used to be. And sometimes we, we come across old plans uh, from houses that were done many years ago where we can uh, see and smell the old blueprints. They had a very distinct smell, didn't they, Spencer? Uh, if you love ammonia, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we still do construction documents um, much in the same way that the blueprints were done many years ago. But with today's technology, and I've been in the profession long enough, I, I dare to say Spencer has as well. The, the way in which we put construction documents together, I think is far superior uh, to the methodologies that were used even 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, today we use basically every digital tool we have at our disposal. Uh, in our firm, we carry forward the 3D model from previous phases and by building that model very, very carefully, we're able to use that as a construction documentation tool. Uh, we're gonna get into this in a little bit more detail later. Um, but essentially, Spencer, would you say that uh, this phase of, of our process um, is, is more behind the scenes or what, what, what is the client's role in this phase uh, from a high level? There's not much going on with the client at this time. Basically, we're coordinating between all the consultants, uh, structural, mechanical, plumbing, um, civil, uh, to verify that the drawings comply uh, to their code requirements or their items that they require to do their drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, um, structural takes precedent um, over all the other um, consultants uh, mm. just because of we need to have this house standing. Um, <laughs> That's kind uh, of important. General, yeah. Um, so generally the structural terms of uh, beams, uh, joists, uh, the framing, sizing, everything takes precedent over the other consultants. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, there is some coordination involved, especially between the structural and the mechanical people. Mm -hmm. uh, especially today with the new code changes um, where a lot of houses we cannot use uh, forced air anymore. Right. Um, um, that poses a, a dilemma on where um, the, you know, the new furnaces or the, the heating systems will go, the space requirements um, and how the run between rooms, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's a two story or basement where there are uh basically beams in the way that the structural engineer decides to put in that treats us from running ducks or anything like that. <laughs> um, right. So what you're talking about uh, for our audience here, you know, essentially uh, we need to be able to move conditioned air, uh, be it heated air or cooled air from one place to another. Essentially there's a heating cooling unit and typically we need to push that air from that unit to, to various rooms. And those happen by means of, of large diameter pipes called ducts. And ducts are not something we typically want to see in a uh, residential architectural design. Sometimes you see them in commercial, but generally in, in residential, those are hidden. And so we're hiding them in walls, we're hiding them within sort of the structural framing um, below the finishes so you don't see them. Uh, so I think what Spencer is, is saying is that a lot of times the, the structural engineer wants to do one thing, the mechanical engineer wants to do another. And a lot of times it's, it's up to the architect to figure out, uh, okay, if they're clashing with their various designs, how do we resolve that? And I think that's a large part of uh, the coordination effort. But th there's other coordination efforts too, right, Spencer? I mean, you've got the civil, you've got the landscape, there's coordination there involved outside the building, right? Uh, yes, uh, especially between civil and landscape. Mm -hmm. um, 
primarily the civil wants to make sure that the home is high enough or the ground around the home is sloping away from the home. So if there's any, uh, when it rains or anything like that, water flows away from the home. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of landscape, um, we look at the landscape and that helps us in terms of the civil where, where we can uh, add or uh, run um, um, drains from the house to landscaped areas. Mm -hmm. um, um, in, in terms of the uh, in terms of those uh, of those items, right, uh, right. So yeah, as other as, items such as uh, keep going, keep going. You're on a roll. So other items um, that we we look at, but we really don't get in, or like pool, like swimming pools, those type of things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, those are usually done by uh, under a separate permit or a separate contractor because mm -hmm. they have to supply all the drawings and everything for that. Right. Um, so we also take a look at that in terms of landscape and some civil involved mm -hmm. in that also. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to say that the architect is sort of the, uh, we're really kind of conducting uh, an orchestra in a sense. You know, we are, uh, you know, we're not necessarily uh, producing the engineering drawings, but we've got to make sure that everyone's on the same page that uh, the master concept of the design um, as dictated by the architect comes together in an elegant way. And really you as the client, I think, don't need to worry so much about that. This is really our job. We do this behind the scenes. Um, you know, you can, you can trust us to put our best effort forward to, to handle all these technical and engineering uh, decisions on your behalf. Uh, we will, as mentioned in this, the second to last paragraph here, if there is a coordination item that results in a cost or a design impact, uh, we will certainly let you know and we will give you um, kind of the pros and cons of your options and help you make the decision, decision there. But generally speaking, uh, this phase happens pretty much behind the scenes um, with our, our construction documents lead, Spencer, really kind of kind of working on behalf of you with all of these technical professionals to get the set uh, not only permit ready, but construction ready. Uh, so really now you're, you're in the home stretch as far as uh, your effort goes. You've done the heavy lifting in the previous phases, and now it's up to us just to basically document your decisions and get this, uh, get this house ready for construction. So there are some small homework assignments uh, that we'd like you to, to do while we're doing the work behind the scenes that Spencer mentioned. Um, because we're, we're going to be quickly approaching the time in which we're, we're gonna be inviting contractors to bid on your project, we want you to start thinking about who you would like to bid. Uh, we're gonna cover this in a lot more detail in phase four, but uh, at the very least, um, start soliciting names of contractors from neighbors, colleagues, relatives. Um, we have probably already referred you to a number of uh, contractors in phase 1A from our own referral list, as you can see here at the bottom. Um, and remember, all of these uh, blue underlined uh, links link to a document. So if you click on this link, you can pop up our contractor referral list. Um, and all of that is a precursor to uh, the competitive bidding process. And so one of the other things we're going to have you do um, during this phase is a quick review of our bid schedule, our bid template, and our instructions to bidders, uh, which we can see here uh, very quickly. So we're going to put a bid schedule together for you that aligns with um, kind of the timing of the completion of your, your permit package uh, and the start of construction. Uh, we try to align the bid schedule uh, to the plan check process. So right around the time that the city or, or your county building department is approving the plans, uh, we are sort of driving the bid process to a conclusion. And we're gonna get into this in a little bit more detail in the next video. Um, the other documents we'll put together as part of the, the instructions to bidders are a bid template uh, for them to input their numbers in a normalized way. 
And then uh, most significantly, the instructions to bidders, which we will customize for your project, uh, which tell the contractors uh, the basis of bidding and some bid language to use. Um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty involved document, uh, but we've uh, tailored it so that you can provide input just by looking at the comments over here on the side. And uh, really, the rest of this is uh, is boilerplate language. So, we will help you uh, prepare and tailor this document for your particular project during this phase as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, when we are done with the phase three construction documents package, uh, we'd like you to take a quick look at it. Uh, we don't expect you to understand all the technical ins and outs of it, but uh, certainly this is your set of drawings. And uh, if you have any questions on it, or if you see anything that needs correction, uh, let us know and we'll address those, those comments uh, in the next phase. So the phase three flow chart is fairly simple compared to uh, other phases that you've uh, seen previously. Um, really, you can tell by the number of orange squares that really all of the work is on us. <laughs> Most of the work is, uh, is on us, uh, meaning Studio S squared and your design team. Um, the effort that's going on behind the scenes is a pretty significant one. Um, and it results in a construction documents package uh, that, that we feel is really among the best, um, most detailed, most thorough packages of, of nearly any single family residential uh, firm. And we've actually been told this by uh, multiple general contractors who've seen these, these, these plans that we come up with. Uh, Spencer has a huge role in putting these plans together. So I'm going to ask him to highlight just a couple of, couple of areas of significance on these plans. Um, one thing that I think we do really well is uh, we take the plans from the previous phase and uh, we, we, we layer on a lot more detail, a lot more information. So they're the same plans that you've approved from phase two and phase one but uh, what we're doing here is we're, we're layering on the information needed for the builder so that he can put, put basically the house together for you as per the design that we've agreed upon. Spencer, I'm gonna zoom in here and um, why don't you just pick out a few things um, that we add to the plan set during construction documents. Yes, generally, uh on the CD uh, package or the plant sets for a builder to uh, bid the project. Um, we had all the dimensions uh, to the windows, doors, uh, room sizes, um, all that information. Uh, uh, we also know it out um, the window and door look, uh, sizes with uh, notes. On windows, we usually use a number um, and on doors, we usually use a symbol with uh, alphabet letter. And that corresponds to a schedule um, later on in, on the sheets. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me about, uh, so I don't think our clients will have seen these uh, dash lines on previous drawing sets. What, is, what do these indicate? Uh, these dash lines represent um, a reference to another sheet that we basically enlarge those rooms uh, to give more information to uh, that particular room, such as um, if we go to that plan, uh, we would note out um, cabinetry size, um, location. Uh, we also would note out uh, things such as um, medicine cabinets, um, uh, shower station size, uh, those type of items. So uh, we also look at things like as showers. For instance, on this uh, plan, we show a, a flush mount shower, which there's no dam or lip between the bathroom area and the shower itself. Um, typically what the contractor does is uh, they frame in the floor about two inches lower than the floor of the house. Um, then they apply um, the tile over that to slope down towards the shower drain. Mm -hmm. um, this 
So in this ap application, there's no dam or anything like that. It gives a much cleaner look, uh, a more modern uh, look, um, a lot, which a lot of clients are preferring today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if we scroll down to the shower below uh, for a secondary bathroom, Mm -hmm. um, uh, down a little bit more, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this shower shows, um, yeah. So this shower shows a dam, or what you would uh, typically see in a typical shower, where you have to step over a lip to get into the shower. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, usually these are done on secondary bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is more cost effective. To do a dam versus uh, a, 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 a damless or a smooth transition between the shower, mm -hmm. so that's that's one thing you can look at in terms of budgetary items. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, yeah, just zoom in on this one little vignette here. Uh, there's a lot of information pertinent to the contractor uh, if he knows what to look for. For example, you know he can identify that we are looking to do a recessed medicine cabinet. So one that is uh, basically flush to the wall. Uh, he can identify the length of the pony wall that stops the cabinet as it goes towards the shower. Um, he can double check the code clearance required for a toilet uh, between the wall and the shower, edge of the shower, and the size of the shower itself, as Spencer mentioned. Uh, so at first glance, the, you know, this is all information that uh, you don't need to worry about per se. It's information that we are adding to the set to uh, really communicate to your building department and the builders, uh, the technical aspects of this house here. Um, I think another thing that uh, Spencer in particular amongst our office staff is really great at is construction detailing. Uh, again, this is something that you as the client don't need to worry about, but um, this is great information for the builders because it essentially conveys to them at a very small scale, uh, what are the various materials? How do they come together? Um, what is the design intent on, on things as small as a roof overhang? Uh, so uh, Spencer's asked me to highlight this particular detail. Uh, do you wanna talk us through this, this roof overhang detail that we developed for this project? Yeah, sure. Uh, typically, what you find in most houses is, is that um, the gutter um, is on the outside of the roof, per se. Um, in this case, um, we've designed the uh, the gutter so it's hidden by um, a piece of, a piece of wood, which they call a fascia. Um, so this clip this will give a much cleaner outline in terms of the roof. Um, exterior and the transition between uh, the, the soffit or the under part of the roof to the, to the corner on the outside. So mm -hmm. in this case, what we're doing is um, we're putting in wood, a wood soffit or wood uh, piece underneath the roof, um, which, will, which will clean up that roof area in terms of you won't see the rafter tails or anything like that. Um, which suits this design um, of the house. So mm -hmm. in this case, we did the we hid the 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 gutter behind mm -hmm. the fascia just to give a, a, a cleaner look to to suit the style of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some other things that uh, that we discussed earlier were the fact that um, we we needed to add some fire uh, some specific fire safe details for this eve because of where this house is located in the fire zone. Correct. That's correct. Um, usually, um, a lot of cities um, will have about specific areas in the city where um, a fire rating or fire rated construction needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Typically, if you live uh, in or near a hillside uh, in the hilly areas uh, mm -hmm. of um, the Bay Area, mm -hmm. um, this is a standard requirement. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, in terms of new construction, additions, remodels, that kind of thing, where you're adding new construction, um, this is a standard, uh, a standard practice uh, mm -hmm. required by the city. Yeah, it's essentially a way to make the uh, exterior of your building less combustible, less susceptible to fire. Uh, and the way we accomplish this is through careful detailing, calling out specific materials, 
uh, even specific types of venting, um, yes. you know, so the same venting that is used to carry out moisture from your attic and, and concealed spaces has to be upgraded for a fire zone. And so we'll call that out here. Uh, that's a great, it's a great explanation. Details are, um, you know, there was a, a famous architect uh, that we all study in school, Mies van der Rohe, who, uh, who has a, a now cliched statement, God is in the details, but uh, architects really ascribe to that. Um, you know, the details are really what, um, I, I think they do two things. They, they ensure that the small things that architects care about, like these concealed gutters, uh, get built properly and the contractor understands the design intent. I think also when these details are in the plans and you're bidding a project out, uh, the contractor then has no excuse for saying, oh, I didn't know that was supposed to be a concealed, de concealed gutter detail. It wasn't clear. Uh, so generally, I think one of the hallmarks of a, of a good construction document set is the number and the specificity of the details uh, that are put together. And, uh, you know, certainly you could probably if you spend enough time, you could probably have two or three times as many details as what we normally show. Uh, but I think our office does a good job of identifying uh, the key details um, that really would impact design or cost or sort of the performance of the house. And so, um, and so, uh, yeah, so I think we, we, we strike a good happy balance uh, between uh, overkill and, and just the right amount. Um, yeah, that's correct. Um... <laughs> In the process, uh, we, we want to give the contractor is basically all the details, um, um, all the finishes and stuff, and it's such a way um, that um, when they bid, everybody bids the same. Right. So um, we don't want you know one contractor bidding, for example, bidding apples when the other contractor is bidding oranges, because <laughs> you know you would have a there would be there could be a considerable difference in costs. Spencer, you're exactly right there doing an appropriate amount of details on a plan set absolutely helps to normalize the bids that you get back uh, the whole apples and oranges phenomenon that you touched on i think it also helps facilitate construction um, if you go out to construction sites with a very skimpy set of plans uh, you're typically gonna you're gonna end up with a lot of questions from the contractor especially a, a diligent responsible contractor on what do you intend to do here? What, what is your design intent? What should this material be? What should this look like? Um, and so we're also trying to be efficient with our time and yours by providing an appropriate number of details so that those questions are minimized and construction can go more smoothly. Uh, so <clears throat> as I mentioned here, um, we're going to be working on all of this for you behind the scenes. We'll need some input from you on reviewing the instructions to bidders, uh, some review of the construction drawings, and this is really kind of a light review. Uh, you don't have to look at every single note, every single dimension. Uh, just look for things that you uh, that we that might have changed recently um, in the last iterations of design. Make sure those got captured. Um, and then really start thinking and looking ahead towards the contractor bidding process. Uh, and really, we'll drive the rest of it for you. Um, once we're done, we'll move on to phase four, which is plan check and bidding. We'll cover that in a separate video. Uh, Spencer, any parting words of wisdom for our, uh, our client base here? Um, well, what I get from a lot of clients when they review these sets is that they're overwhelmed <laughs> by the amount of information. Yes. Yes, um, I'm overwhelmed so, at times, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, when you look, what you're looking for is basically this, the same, you know, things you look through the design, the shapes, the, uh, the layouts and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, don't worry too much about the, the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, so you will look at uh, finishes um, to make sure that, you know, we still have like the wood finish up in the ceilings, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um but not uh, you don't have to go into detail and look at each different dimension and you know material and you know those type of things. Generally, what we look uh, what we will notify notify you on mm -hmm. is the biggest thing is um, information between the mechanical and the mm -hmm. structural. Right. Um, there, there, yeah. There, uh, there's always conflicts, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we won't. 
unfortunately we won't catch everything a lot of some of this stuff does pop up during construction also yeah so um at that time we, you know we would definitely take a look at uh, you know look at those aspects also yeah. uh, but we're trying to you know find all the big things um where the ducks run and stuff like that and mechanical versus construction during the drawing process yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, you know, as much effort as we put into the plans, uh, there is just a, an incredible amount of technical information that goes into these and, and no set of plans can ever be 100% perfect. Uh, so uh, although we do our best to be accurate and detailed, uh, there's still going to be inevitably some adjustments that need to happen in the field. Um, and those typically aren't a big deal. You know, we'll get together with your contractor. There's typically options for solutions. Uh, and generally these aren't gonna have really any cost impact or maybe a very minor cost impact if that. So yeah. uh, just rest assured that uh, you're going into construction with an excellent set of plans. Um, typically, I think near, near the best in the industry uh, does for this particular sector of the market. And we're also available to, um, to assist with construction effort along the way uh, with your builder, whomever you choose. Uh, so this has been a great video. Thank Spencer. I want to thank you so much for your participation. Um, You're welcome. You know, your knowledge and insight is, is super valuable and uh, I'm glad you bring it to all of our projects and, and I'm glad you brought it to this video. Oh, well, thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you as well. Lovely clients and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.